One of the biggest reasons raw lifters fail when it comes to the application of conjugate periodization is that they are failing to recognize that conjugate is a periodization model, not a method. Conjugate is a set of broad principles, not a you must do this in order to fit the method. Conjugate is taking a variety of means to build strength and then performing all of them within a single microcycle. That just means that we are doing something lighter and higher rep, we're doing something lighter and faster, and we're doing something heavier all in the same microcycle. And if we're talking powerlifting, a microcycle being the shortest term or the shortest period of training that we can structure and organize above a single training day, we're doing all that in a single week. So it's like, as long as we're hitting something heavy, as long as we're hitting something fast, and as long as we're doing something to get a higher rep pumpy stimulus, we're doing conjugate. It doesn't have to be laid out in a single specific way to be considered conjugate periodization. And I think that's where a lot of raw lifters get messed up is because they think that conjugate has to look like Westside or has to look like what Louis did or has to look like what is happening at Westside. Because Westside, as a method, it is a way to apply conjugate periodization's model to a training week. And yes, Louis was absolutely brilliant. I cannot deny that. Louis was extremely instrumental in bringing powerlifting forward. Louis absolutely changed the sport and everything that he did worked extremely, extremely, extremely well, better than anything else for the genre of powerlifting that he pursued. I cannot fault him. This is in no way saying that Louis was wrong. This is in no way saying that what Louis did was bad. This is in no way saying that what Louis did was unintelligent. This is saying that he was fucking brilliant for multiply powerlifting. The problem is that right now, I ain't trying to multiply powerlift and you probably aren't either if you're watching this video. So where does that leave us? Well, we gotta do things a little bit different if we want to succeed for raw. And it's like, what are the biggest differences between multiply powerlifting and raw powerlifting? Well, the big one is that in raw powerlifting, we're not wearing that supportive gear, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to be stronger if we're a raw lifter. It just means that we need to be stronger in different areas because we do not have the support of the equipment. We need to prioritize our quads. We need to prioritize our chest. We need to train those because we don't have a squat suit or a bench shirt holding us up during the lift. And this isn't saying that multiply lifters are weak. The best multiply lifters are extremely strong. They are just strong specific to the demands of multiply gear. Westside was designed to make lifters strong to the demands of multiply gear. And I know, I know, I know, everyone always wants to say that the gear of the 90s was basically raw, the gear of the 90s, blah, 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 blah. The 90s Westside guys trained raw, they only put the gear on at the meets. And yes, that is all true. But in order to get pounds of that 90s gear, they still had to lift with the technique that was directed towards getting pounds out of the gear, not using their quads to get pounds out of the squat. They were still trying to get pounds out of their bench shirt and modifying their technique and modifying their training to optimize for putting on a bench shirt. We're trying to optimize for never putting on a shirt, which means that what we need to prioritize in training will be different than the guys that are putting on gear. So, general rules of thumb if you want to make conjugate work for raw power thing. Yes, we're still doing something heavy, we're still doing something fast, we're still doing something to get jacked every single week. But what we're doing within that is going to be targeting what we need for raw lifters. Trevor Jaffe quote is raw power thing happens in the anterior chain, and that is something that I absolutely agree with. We need to prioritize our quads for raw power lifters, so our exercise selection should be more biased towards quad dominant, or at least lifts that do something for the quadriceps. We're not trying to sit way the fuck back on a box squat to avoid the quads. We're not gonna do pretty much entirely good mornings to load the posterior chain because that isn't what we need to prioritize. If we're raw lifting, we need to be doing knees forward work. We need to be doing front squats. We need to be doing high bar squats. We need to be doing stuff to build our quads. On the bench side of things, yes, triceps are still going to be important for raw lifters, but they shouldn't be the only thing that matters because we need packs, we need bottom end. We should be doing wide grip work. We should be doing flies, we should be doing increased range of motion pressing to build the shit out of our pecs so that we have pecs in the bottom of our bench when we need them in the bottom of a bench. So guys, conjugate periodization as a model absolutely can work for raw powerlifting. 
but it doesn't need to look like west side and yes it can look a little bit like west side in the layout but we probably shouldn't be doing the same exercise selection as the multiply guys that succeed with the west side method use and again someone's gonna say it's not west side unless you're at west side yeah well no shit fucker and i'm out don't be afraid of training thank you for watching